Semper Vivi here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling like we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in iHeart American Forces Radio, sportsbyline.com, all of our over-the-air affiliates, podcasting, replay on Sirius XM, maybe your video streaming on Twitch or YouTube, however you're joining me today. I'd just like to say thank you. Hopefully wherever you are, it's sunny outside. If not, hopefully it's sunny inside your mind. A little bit overcast here on Delmarva. It's fine. The tree pollen's been like Fat Joe all the way up. Need that to go away. Brian not here, planning for his 420 party tomorrow, surely. You know, knowing Brian Alvarez, he's that type of guy. I am planning to have a celebration a little bit later on today. Why? Because Filthy Tom Lawler will be joining us. That's always a celebration in itself. Going to have a celebration at this house when my wife gets home, and I can finally tell her, I can finally tell her that the Iron Claw is finally going to stream on HBO Max or just Max, whatever you call it now. She has been dying. We went and saw it. Uh, she has been wanting to buy it. It's like we, we spend like 20 bucks a month on Max anyway. Can't we just wait? And I was waiting and waiting. Finally, it is going to start streaming on May 10th, Friday, May 10th. So five months after the Iron Claw was released in theaters, it is now going to be able to be streamed. A24 Films and HBO have an agreement, a multi-year deal that they signed last December to make Max the streaming home of all of A24's movies, which means The Rock's upcoming biopic on the smashing machine Mark Kerr is also going to be on HBO as well. Iron Claw, if you didn't see it, I would suggest that you see it. It may be the best movie ever made that has anything to do with professional wrestling. It was, I thought, outstanding. So, Zac Efron is Kevin Von Erich. Look, the one thing about it, if you haven't seen it, if you're expecting everybody to look like you remember them from TV and the magazines, they're not going to do that, especially Ric Flair. But Zac Efron, he was great. We'll be back, myself and Filthy Tom Lawler, to get into everything, including this weekend's AEW Dynasty, Wrestling Observer Live. Oh, Mike Semper Vivi here with you, along with Filthy Tom Lawler. It's a Filthy Observer Live on Friday. We do this show right here for an hour at a time every single day, but if you want to try to find us 24-7, you can on Twitter slash X. I am at SemperVV. Tom is at Filthy Tom Lawler. The website for this show is at WONF4W, and the broadcaster is at Sports Byline USA. Jim Valley and Andrew Zarian, that's their Twitter handles as well, too. Just put a little A in front of that. Andrew is here with you on Sundays at 6 p.m., and uh, I believe Jim is going to be here. I'm not sure live. Uh, you know, if, if you know, he wants to drop in and let us know. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if he's going to be live or not tomorrow. But 1 p.m. on Saturdays, that's when he's here with you. I'd also like if you made the wrestling news part of your day, everything you need to know to get your day started or get you up to date in the world of professional wrestling between 5 and 15 minutes long every single day, posted at about 9 a.m. Eastern time. Just go on over to the wherever you find your favorite podcast or thewrestlingnews.com or at Wrestling News AV on Facebook and Twitter. Wanted to get through all that very quickly because without any other further ado, He's still a champion to me. I'm still a member of Team Filthy, even if those sorry-ass people from the West Coast dropped off and don't want to have anything to do with you anymore, Tom Lawler. I am a member of your team. I am happy that you're here. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. You know, Team Filthy is not just based here on the West Coast in the Pacific time zone. We're international, mm -hmm. baby, and we are happy to have you as our east coast one of one of many east coast members of the dojo now i gotta ask you talking about dojos that's that's where fighters come from and sometimes tom sometimes guys take uh too many shots maybe too early in their career maybe if they've already had some issues and they continue to get beat up by people like gervonta davis you know maybe maybe uh, it's time to get out of the dojo and find something else to do. Bottom line, Ryan Garcia is fighting on pay-per-view tomorrow night. This is going head up against Collision and Rampage and, of course, uh, up against the TNA Rebellion pay-per-view. But there's a boxing match between Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia, and Ryan Garcia seems completely out of his mind. 
that seems like a good synopsis <laughs> to me. I mean, the, he missed weight by three pounds today per an agreement at the press conference because he looked like he was going to miss weight. He now owes Devin Haney $1.5 million. He has been unhinged, I guess is the best way to put it, over the past few months. Say, even Kanye West is telling him to chill. Well, so much so that Devin Haney, who looks absolutely ridiculous in the grand scheme of humanity, walking around there with shades on and a bulletproof vest at all times, looks like the normal one in this situation ryan garcia has been giving unsolicited health advice he has given us the cure for cancer i have my water and black coffee sitting by no food in sight he was i believe held and killed at one point well he was held at bohemian grove remember that the story there where he was like tied down and he couldn't leave and there was some weird sex scenario going on where children were being sold and they made him watch all of this the illuminati did it was and the, and the thing is he's just gotten weirder since then in the the press conferences leading into this fight he got kicked out of the mets game he was supposed to throw out the first pitch with yeah. haney a couple days ago and got kicked out like look he, I know... he said go go yankees he's gonna yes. expose mlb Yes, that was one of his tweets, was he was going to expose the Mets and MLB. I don't think the Mets could have exposed themselves any more than they have with, you know, some of the decisions they've made over the years. But, I mean, like, I does, from a fighter's point of view, does, does Ryan Garcia want to fight? Because he looked like crap, and there was no way he was going to make weight. And for him to actually make that bet, which Devin Haney says he is making good on, so I guess points to Garcia there. But, like, is there am I... It, should he be fighting? Does he want to fight? What? Or is this all some sort of 4D chess being played by a guy who's admitted to have some mental issues that he's actually taking that and actually using it as a weapon? This could be 3D chess. I don't know if he's playing 40 chess. I hope he is because at this point, as the odds keep climbing, I may go drop, you know, some cool money on Ryan Garcia if it, if it gets well, up high enough, thing. hoping this is... that this has been a big troll job. The biggest concern to me is the mate, uh, the weight miss. You know what I mean? He has been in the spotlight, in the limelight for a long time, and he's acted – bizarre for quite a while obviously this is the most insane that he seemed on the surface level but you know you don't want to take oscar de la hoya's word for it that he sees <laughs> a different side of ryan garcia are, are you saying that oscar de la hoya may not be telling the truth about ryan garcia's training regiment going into this fight oscar de la hoya a noted truth speaker at all times, you know, who's I never believe, had any issues of his own he's tried to sweep under the rug, you know. I believe Chael Sonnen, of all people, <laughs> yeah. put it as close as I would to this situation. And should Ryan Garcia be pulled from the fight? Well, no, I don't think so because it's a slippery slope. At what point do you draw the line and say this guy has been saying outlandish things because he's off his rocker or he's been saying outlandish things to promote the fight you know we've seen throughout history fighters just do things that defy any logic of a normal human being time after time we've seen in the ufc i could name many instances there's been multiple times where fighters have you know to put it in were as bad terms as could be going off the deep end and the ufc has still allowed them to come back and fight in a relatively short manner if you remember actually a few years ago max holloway made it quite known that he was having some sort of issue and then i believe you know he was fighting not too soon after that Th this has been going on for a long time and we rarely ever see commissions step in and say, hey, we can't let this guy fight. Are you going to tell me that the stuff Ryan Garcia is saying isn't anything worse than Tony Ferguson said for the past six or seven years? 
At least I can read what Ryan Garcia is saying in a tweet. I guess so. Although he's he's taking it to Mike Tyson off his meds back in the 90s levels with some of the things that he's been saying at press conferences. Look, you couldn't talk about the UFC. I remember a guy that would have all of these identity crises leading into the weigh-ins. It was the damnedest thing. I don't know what happened to that guy. I think he may have gotten into the wrestling business. But I tell you what, there was something wrong with that guy. I can't remember his name, though. I know, I know you're talking about me. Good good one. But Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was trying to get some real information out there for the people. Because I know, and without naming well, names. I mean, well, look, let's be honest here. But there's a – you can be neurologically clear of the fight but not be in the right mental condition to fight and not be okay. Oliver McCall proved that when he quit against Lennox Lewis, started crying in the middle of the ring and had to give up. Mike, I know people who were on medication – to help with depression stuff caused by head trauma and they're still taking this medication and they're booked to fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Look, if the commission lets it go, then you let the, it go. I mean, that was always yeah, with Holyfield. The other thing is it, because I'm sure you're familiar with Bigfoot Silva. Yeah. Right. Who has now suffered loss after loss, after loss, after the loss, after loss, after loss. And people are like, why is this guy still fighting? Well, he has a right to make a living for himself and his family. True. You know, regardless of if we believe he should be fighting or not, you know, sure. We'd all like to have like altruistic motives, but in the grand scheme of life, when there's people dying left or right atrocities being committed left and right, I think Ryan Garcia should be allowed to fight on Saturday night. I promise y'all we're going to get into the wrestling here shortly, but seventy nine ninety nine if you want to try to order that fight, plus five seventy five right now on Garcia if you want to throw a bet in on him. We'll be back, Wrestling Observer Live. Producer Daniel taking us on a hard turn there. The Max Holloway's wife, I believe that was filthy. I don't know. I'm throwing to you, say something, I don't know. <laughs> Tony Ferguson's wife. Tony Ferguson, I'm sorry, <laughs> Max Holloway, Jesus, now I'm getting sued. Tony Ferguson's wife, I'm sorry about that. Nothing filthy? Can't do anything there? I, I think the blows that I've taken to the head have stepped in for a second as I regain my thoughts after that it, atrocious clip. As you do that, I'm going to uh, reset things here with WWE SmackDown taking place live tonight from the PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I didn't see uh, a whole lot right before we came on the air, so I'm not sure if there's been any updates to this, but a couple of matches have been announced. AJ Styles against LA Knight, number one contenders match for the Universal title. Bailey against Naomi for the WWE Women's title. And a fatal four-way Number one contenders tag team match between the Authors of Pain, the Street Profits, New Catch Republic, and Legato, Angel, and Berto. I, I want to see Angel and Berto win just because I like them, but that's not going to happen, especially when you have heels already holding the belts. The ones that make the most sense to me are the Street Profits. Tom, I don't know about you. Do you want to see Bait and Dunn in there with Waller and Theory? I would think the Street Profits would be a little more entertaining. I think Bate and Dunn have actually gotten the majority of the wins on the SmackDown side in the tag division over the past few months. They had a shot at the Judgment Day, if you remember correctly, in a singles match uh, in Australia. And then they also were in the title match at WrestleMania. So I think that they would now be moved out a little bit. Hey, you asked if I want to see them wrestle in a match. Yeah against anyone those guys are great but as you mentioned i think the street profits need something you know really they were put with lashley over the course of the last year and a lot of people thought it was going to be a big step up for them in on the card and really that has not happened they've been stagnant for a majority of the time they just got the win as a faction over the final testament at WrestleMania, and uh, you know now I think it's the time to do something with them. Montez Ford is coming off the hot, hot, too hot for TV, but it was on Peacock reality series with him and Bianca. So 
Yeah, let's give it to the Prophets. Did, did you watch any of that? I see they're going to be hosting Family Feud, like Team Montez against Team Bianca or something like that coming oh up. Oh, my God. Steve Harvey, give that guy some salt, Peter, before the <laughs> woman from WWE show up. Good <laughs> Lord. <laughs> be some... Ah, uh, never mind. A WWE on tour. How did oh, how yes. how is he Go still ahead. allowed to be on TV? Who Steve Harvey? Yeah, because well, I mean, according to Cat Williams, I mean, he's got his theories on on how that happened. You know, if Bernie was still alive, a lot of this probably wouldn't be happening. Tom. Oh wait a Actually, minute! Actually, it so, would be. Hold, hold on, hold on. Steve Bernie Harvey would be in movies. <laughs> Steve Harvey is in Cat Williams sites too. Things didn't go too well for Puffy. Well, I mean, you should have heard that interview that he did with Shannon Sharp. A couple of, look, this is what got the year off to the start that it did was Cat Williams coming out and saying, you know, it's wartime again in 2024. Okay. That, that's well, actually, what caused all of Actually, this what he said was all the big D bandits are going to get caught in 2024. The time's up. Hmm. And we see that's what's what Cat happening. Williams said. We see what's been happening. You said a lot. Uh, WWE at the O2 Arena today in London. Tomorrow they're going to be in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Yesterday they had a sold-out show in Cardiff, Wales. As far as American shows go this weekend, Erie, Pennsylvania on Saturday for Saturday night's main event. And then at the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. That is an old-school name. That's something you'd hear right before WWF Superstars came out in 1987. They'd have, like, the general manager of the building welcoming you to the show. But that's in Fort Wayne, yeah. Indiana. On what, what's the main event on that? Bundy versus Gurria? <laughs> <That's, laughs> well, and again, this, uh, I'm assuming going to be mostly SmackDown. I didn't see any of the results from the uh, UK tour, but uh, I'm assuming that's mostly raw folks over there. And we're going to have uh, the rest of the SmackDown crew is going to be in uh, Fort Wayne and in Erie, Pennsylvania this weekend. Hey, Ladies. I was in Fort Wayne uh, last yeah. month, made a stop at Uranus. On the way there. Mine? The Uranus Chocolate Factory. Is it really called the Uranus Chocolate Factory? Maybe fudge. I, I mean, no steak and shake? Or was there enough shaking going on over at the fudge factory that, uh, uh never mind. I don't know. Look, where'd you, where, look at where this show has gone. Uh, man, AEW Collision and Rampage both take place on TNT Saturday night from the Peoria Civic Center in Peoria, Illinois. Collision already lined up with a six-man tag between Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, and Mark Briscoe against Action Andretti in top flight. FTR and PAC against Kazuchika Okada and the Young Bucks. The acclaimed against Austin and Colton Gunn. And a bunkhouse brawl match, Brian Danielson and Claudio Castagnoli uh, Brian Alvarez is going to be sitting there with a, a like two fistfuls of rosary beads, just praying that Brian Danielson does not get hurt during that match. They face off against Kanosuke Takeshita and Kyle Fletcher on Rampage, which will air immediately after Collision. No Rampage tonight, folks. Emi Sakura will face Yuka Sakazaki, and then there will be, because it is 420, a high-flying 420 elimination four-way match. Only one of these people I would associate with a 420 holiday. All of the rest of them are working uh, Game Changer Wrestling in Los Angeles on Saturday. But Rob Van Dam, Isaiah Cassidy, Commander, and Big Shotty Lee Johnson. Tom, what do you think about that? What do you think goes on at the private party? I don't know. Hopefully it's not like a puffy party where if you stay too late, there may be issues. Big, big shoddy. Big shoddy. You don't like that nickname? I don't know. I mean, you got a name like it's Lee all right, Johnson. But they... You got to like, you know, fire it up with something, don't you? It's like Bob you... Smith. You need to have yeah, some sort you do. Of like... You do. You do need to f spark it up with something. You're right. Like, Maybe he'll do so in that 420 match. Punishment Martinez. What'd you ever think about that as a name? I mean, things are working like out it. pretty well now, but you know. Punishment Martinez is a cooler name than Damian Priest, although Damian Priest has worked, so. You got to go with what works. 
AEW. What works for them is running pay-per-views that do incredibly well. No matter what the lead-up is, no matter what the build-up is, no matter what the ratings are leading into a show, they always seem to do very well. And the last show with Sting retiring did very, very well. The one before that, which, you know, was a bad pay-per-view. The worst pay-per-view that they've ever done was the World's End pay-per-view. Even that did well. This week's Dynamite only did 762,000 people on TBS, down kind of big from the 819,000 that they had for the episode last week where the, the whole thing centered around showing the video of backstage from All In. The 18 to 49-year-old demo was down as well from last week, so back down under 800,000. Again, that makes it like four of the last five weeks or something like that, but when it comes to the pay-per-views they always seem to convert tom about 150,000 people or something like that this show is going to be more available than it's ever been before because you don't have to use the craptastic bleacher report app or use your crappy website have to deal with their terrible 360p setup that they have yeah it just it sucks so i'm happy what, what that is, they've moved over yeah is it our viewer's choice so, <laughs> kind of, sort of, yes, because in addition to pay-per-view.com broadcasting the Haney-Garcia fight, if you want that, they're also going to be broadcasting this, and all that is is the old in-demand service that you remember. It's just now owned by all of the cable companies like Cox and Charter and Comcast, so they all have their hand in it. And again, I think that's the reason that it's not a big deal that WBD is letting other sources do this. It's going to be available through Triller and YouTube TV as well, too, so you can go ahead and watch it there, but what have you thought about some of the buildup leading into this? When we get back from break, we can talk about go down the card and give our predictions for it. But, you know, about 6,000 tickets apparently sold for this thing, about, you know, 1,500 short of a sellout. So they may even still be able to get that. But what have you thought about the last couple of weeks, a lot of which have centered around CM Punk leading into this show? To be fair, I think that this is one of the cards, like, the buildup for the feuds has been hot and cold to me, you know, depending upon the week. It seems to me, and I could be wrong, but it seems to me as if Swerve was almost hotter before this program with Joe started taking hold. Um, I, I think I don't mind the inclusion of Jack Perry back onto TV. I think I would imagine that he makes his way back Sunday and helps the Bucks walk out as the tag title holders. But like I said, I mean, I've been kind of hot and cold on the build. Obviously, the AEW action is always top notch, just like this show. Damn right. The looming presence of Jack Perry. It's like the looming presence of Brian Alvarez hovering over this show. We'll be back. Wrestling Observer Live. With you, Mike Semper, VV, Filthy Tom Lawler. It is a filthy Friday here on the show. Big Boss Man Brian Alvarez will be back with you here on this show. Maybe along with Filthy Tom on Monday. I'm not going to be here, so we may get a uh, a request, Tom, that Filthy 4 Daily gets mixed into a Wrestling Observer Live. I'm just warning you now about that when you get the late text from Brian. I'll, when I get the message at 11 a.m., I'll be prepared to go. Don't <laughs> <Yeah>. worry. <laughs> AEW Dynasty. AEW's ready to go. Their pay-per-view coming up to Chaffetz Arena in St. Louis, Missouri, on the campus of St. Louis University. is about a 10,000-seat building that's set up for about 7,500 with the stage and all that sort of stuff. Uh, the Wrestling Observer was the one uh, in the newsletter today, the new edition that's up for subscribers over at the website. Dave said the advance was 6101 at press time. So uh, Russell Tix actually has the estimate a little bit higher than that, but it's a pay-per-view, so no surprise that it's going to be uh, nearly filled up, and those are people that want to be there. And they are getting a show again, Tom. As I said, no matter what the lead-up is to this show, usually the pay-per-views themselves pay off. And I'll run through the zero hour real quick. Matt Seidel against Trent Beretta, Katsuyori Shibata and Orange Cassidy against Lee Moriarty and Shane Taylor. And the combination 
AEW ROH World Six Man Tag Team title match between Billy Gunn and the acclaimed against Bullet Club Gold. That leads us to the main card, and we'll take it from the main event on down. AEW World Title Match Samoa Joe against Swerve Strickland. If you were looking at this with odds, Swerve's a minus 200 as of now, Samoa Joe a plus 150. I look. I Swerve Strickland, I would probably put the belt on him now, but Samoa Joe has been a strong champion, even though the times have not been great for them. I don't think you can blame Samoa Joe for a lot of AEW's problems and the lack of interest, but, you know, could could there's a lot that could happen here. Swerve could win, but could Hangman Page come back and cause Joe to get the victory? I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I think Hangman comes back i think joe retains i think hangman beats joe and then you get what a year ago i guess you would have thought was impossible when swerve was committing home invasion and threatening hangman's life but you'll have the big baby face win by swerve strickland for the title over hangman brian danielson and will osprey Will Ospreay, a large favorite, a minus 1,000. Brian Danielson, plus 500. Brian Danielson always puts everybody over, you know, to the point where we've made fun of him on the show for how often he's put people over. This, look, I would say Brian Danielson should get on a winning streak, maybe get himself back into the title picture. I would like that, but it ain't the time to beat Will Ospreay. No way, no how. What do you think? As much as I would love to see Brian Danielson get a win, always be in title contention, it's it's Osprey's time to win this match. So AEW TBS title house rules match, Julia Hart against Willow Nightingale. Willow Nightingale at these odds that I'm looking at actually the underdog plus 300 julia hart minus five i look i like julia hart i like the gimmick and i like i like she's probably at times my favorite member of the house of black but like isn't it some point time to like do something with willow nightingale belt up willow nightingale here or are these odds reflecting that people think that mercedes or maybe chris statlander is going to cause some havoc for willow i think julia hart retains i don't see any other way i don't think willow needs any sort of title especially not right now i think what she needs is big wins you know maybe a little bit more of a spotlight what are you thinking chris statlander turns here it's, is well, that it's what been, we've been building to i would imagine I, it's been feeling like yeah that, you know, and, it, that and if that does happen then surely willow doesn't need to win the belt so and look and i look mercedes is probably better i would like mercedes to be in the position as a heel and i think chris statlander I think she needs to be focused on, too. I mean, if you want to go ahead and turn them and have Stokely Hathaway there to be, you know, a thorn in the side of everything, I mean, that could be a way to do it where then that's just another roadblock for Willow to have to overcome, you know, beating Chris Statlander to get to Mercedes. I mean, you could do it that way, I guess. But at some point, Mercedes is also going to have to get in the ring. World Tag Team Title Tournament Final Ladder Match, the Young Bucks. Minus 300 favorites, even though I would think it would be higher against FTR. Plus 200 right now. The only thing that makes, well, not the only thing, but the thing that makes the most sense to me here with Jungle Boy, Jack Perry, coming back from New Japan, coming back as the scapegoat, with how we've seen the build-up to this match, it's just natural that he goes in, interferes, and causes FTR to lose and the Young Bucks to win, which means FTR has looked, boy, have they, I don't know when their last big match win here is, but they have looked being beaten flat. I don't know who you bring in. You know, who's the answer to help him and help them team up and face the Young Bucks and try to get the titles and go up against Jack Perry in six-man matches? But, I mean, Tom, what do you think? Because, again, it seems like it sucks right now for FTR. Well, I noticed that as we run down all these matches, it all revolves around people coming back and interfering and causing oh, havoc. Well. It seems like all the storylines have been 
revolving around that. I think FTR is always going to be over with the fans to a certain extent. I think bringing Jack Perry back here and having him join with the Young Bucks and Okada is the perfect choice for this character, for this storyline that they're doing. And then, I mean, I, I'm not so focused on what happens with FTR after that. Maybe they'll go after those trios titles with Daniel Garcia again. Remember that team? Well, uh, yeah, well, you got Daniel Garcia beat up this past week here. But, I mean, yeah. I guess you could you could have FTR win. It's just, to me, then you would need somebody to offset interference from Jack Perry. And I guess that's a, another question. What is Jack Perry's first feud back? What's his first big deal back? Is it John Moxley? I mean, who who is it? Yeah, I mean, if you want to play off of the storyline with Shooter, I guess it could be John Moxley, but... Um, you know, I don't know who it is. You know, maybe it's Daniel I thought you Garcia. Thought you meant CM Punk there for a minute. You know, maybe, maybe it is Daniel Garcia that makes the save. I mean, who's? I, I'm waiting for the debut, honestly, of the other team, the other guy that was always airing backstage footage, and that's Alex Shelley. When are these Modi, Motor City Machine Guns coming in to take on the Young Bucks? That's what I want to see. Yeah, I, you know what, now that everything has been wrapped up and it was officially last night on TNA television, they had their loss, it is over, everybody knows that their contract is up and they are going to be leaving anyway, so they are free agents, you know, to me it makes sense that they show up on Wednesday, maybe to get in the Young Bucks face, I wouldn't mind that at all. Six-man tag team match, Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, and Mark Briscoe, who are favorited over the House of Black, Brody King, Buddy Matthews, and Malachi Black. I would like to see Adam Copeland and, and Malachi Black as a feud. I would like to see Eddie Kingston and Brody King beat the hell out of each other, and I'd like to see Mark Briscoe and Buddy Matthews have matches as well, too. Um, with that said, <laughs> I, 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 I would hope that, let's say it's Brody King over Eddie Kingston. You know, I'll take that as far as a you know a thing goes here to to end this match but the way brian talks there's no way it's almost like they're never going to do business so adam copeland and malachi black i mean that seems to make sense but i don't know what do you think maybe we get brody king over mark briscoe sets him up for a shot at the ring of honor title that's that's a feud i'd like to watch for that belt yeah, it would be physical right? for sure. It's about time. I think it's about time Brody King gets moved up the card. And that's about as much as you can move him up right now with the just log jam of talent. Put him in a main event feud on what is essentially the B show and give him that experience while you can because, I mean, he's awesome. And he's going to be for a long time, barring any major injury. He doesn't wrestle some crazy style no. where he seems to get injured all the time. And so. we haven't seen nothing out of him, unfortunately, because of injuries and other things. I mean, we've gotten little glimpses of it, but we have not seen what the potential in Brody King on the AEW roster. So, yeah, I would love to see something like that, have him be used for that. And now that Mark Briscoe's ROH champion, I'm all for keeping things separate. But with what Collision and Dynamite usually do or what Collision and Rampage usually do, I would utilize him as much as possible on TV. You know, to me, he's a draw. I don't have any metrics to back that up, but it would make Delmarva happy. Uh, AEW World Women's Title Match: Tony Storm against Thunder Rosa. Most people think Tony Storm is going to win. I do as well. Uh, not the time to pull the uh, plug on this, is it? No. There's uh, there's so much going on with Tony Storm. Uh, obviously, I was at the Stardom show a few weeks ago where she made an appearance, and then now there's been some love triangle or quadrangle with Mina Shirakawa who now apparently has split Club Venus away and his, his own faction as well. So mm -hmm. then you have, of course, Mariah May. You have uh, Thunder Rosa. You have Deanna Parazzo all staking their claim in this situation. So it's it's volatile to say the least, but Tony Storm clearly the most overact 
in this division. So keep the belt on her, whether she's a heel, whether she's a baby face. I mean, you got to play this hand while it's hot. AEW Continental title, Kazuchika Okada, minus 800, PAC, plus 425. Match is going to be awesome. I think Okada wins. What do you think? Yeah, I think this is just the one of the first steps on the way to Okada building this belt up, much like the old IWGP Intercontinental title was built up to the status of a secondary world championship. And, uh, you know, it looked like we were kind of getting a storyline in that vein when Punk brought back the real world title. So I think we're going to get that again in the future with two major singles championship belts and then a big showdown at the end for him do you think he took that with him i remember he came out with it in london but you know did they quickly pull it off the table did he go to the back with it i can't remember but uh AEW international title because we have nothing but titles roderick strong minus 150 kyle o'reilly plus 200 probably too early to take the belt off of strong uh a win here to actually start this feud in the title match wouldn't hurt my feelings because I'd like to see O'Reilly win at some point or this to actually continue on because they'll be great together. Yeah, you could have the kingdom interfere. You could have it's the simple story of Kyle O'Reilly really fighting back from a long, long injury, and you can see the physical differences in him, and that simply could be the story. You know what I mean? Roderick Strong goes after the guy's back all the time and all those nerves yep the neck damage everything could compound and it could tell an easy story so that's going to be a great match as we said earlier I, i'm guessing all these matches are going to be pretty darn good even the one with chris jericho and hook i hope hook wins we'll be back Pull the to hook server live mike <laughs> semper vivi filthy tom lawler here putting a bow on this thing Tom it is 420 tomorrow what are you going to what are you going to do to celebrate it I'm going to beat the crap out of Dominic Garini at AIW up in smoke in Cleveland, Ohio now who's who, who else is booked on that card are they doing anything themed or anything like that because I saw the well, GCW lineup on Saturday with Grim Reaper and the Stoner Brothers and Two Cold Scorpio and yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they got a, a theme going on. AIW has Alec Price. That may be all that you need. One garbage daddy is all you need. <laughs> on four twenty. <laughs> Where's Cole Radrick that day? Is that Paul Cade? When, when is Paul Cade? That's going to be coming up at some point. You, you should have gotten booked on that. He's probably at the track. Well, guess. yeah, he might be, actually. You know, I'd like to see, actually, Cole Radrick do a, a, a tour of NASCAR and dirt tracks and all that sort of stuff. I, mean, I don't know if everybody knows this or not, but uh, being out there from the Midwest, he likes uh, racing things on four wheels and being in demolition derbies and such. Well, <laughs> we just went through, what, 55 minutes of a demolition derby? And Pretty much. Uh, audio style. Yeah. Well, that's Demolition what... Derby. A wreck. After a wreck. Yeah. Well, what else are we here for? I mean, come on now. I mean, we could, like, talk about what else are we going to talk about? PFL? You know? I don't know. No, we're not talking about that. Hey, but Kushida is in the best of the Super Juniors. I will say that they did add him in there. Now that Yo is out, suffered a torn right labrum at the uh, beginning of his match against That's his right. former partner show not all that long ago. So Ch Champions uh, Carnival started the last night. It did indeed. So a lot of stuff going on, including the TNA Rebellion pay-per-view yeah. and a lot of other stuff as well. I mean, Still we're not going to talk about it. No, because we got to go. We got to go, like, right now. Like, right now. Like, now. Talk to y'all again after a while.